so glad that we're all here. I think some of you are here. I'm really impressed, proud, um, to celebrate, to commemorate, and to give thanks for the birth and the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. So Cornell West, black scholar, activist, and theologian, reports sadly that black youth were alienated from society often exclaim, all that Martin Luther King Jr. stuff, that's over. To which West replies, love is never over. Never, never. It may seem as if it's gone out of fashion, but sooner or later, you're gonna wish it was at your house. Deep love never goes out of style. When you're in deep crisis and the catastrophe hits you, you're gonna wish love was at your house. So let's talk about love. Because for sure, there are different types. There's romantic, passionate, make you crazy love. There's cool and considerate neighbor love. There's love that swells our hearts, make our, our eyes tear up when we see something so beautiful or remember a tender moment. There's love that only God can give, unconditional and infinite. And there's active love, love which transforms. And that's the love we are celebrating this day, the love which Martin Luther King exuded, the love which demanded he went to Memphis, where he was murdered. Dr. King had gone to Memphis to support and uplift the Memphis sanitation workers who were on strike. Now, the sanitation workers went on strike very reluctantly because they knew if they did, they would be fired, blacklisted, and never work again. They knew that if they didn't bow to the horrible conditions, their families would starve. So they were very reluctant to stand up and demand humane treatment. That's all they wanted, not to be treated like dogs or worse. Working conditions were, according to participants, horrible every day. They were expected to carry cracked and broken tubs of garbage on their heads or shoulders, and the garbage would leak all of them. They worked in the rain, the snow, and the ice. People said, a garbage man is nothing. All they wanted was some decency and dignity to be treated as men. So in April 1968, 1,300 black men said, enough. One participant put the situation quite succinctly. You know, if you bend your back, people will ride your back. But if you stand up straight, people can't ride your back. So that's what we did. We stood up straight and said, I am a man. The night before he was shot, Martin Luther King delivered his famous I've been to the mountaintop speech. Where he, he calls for love justice, for a love which will not be guided by what will happen to you or me if I act, but by the question, what will happen to those in need if I don't act? That's the loving question. That's the love we need to be. For justice becomes no more than a simple or complicated set of rules to follow if it isn't paired with love. Love justice means we are zealous about ensuring 
that all persons have equal rights to freedom, to food, to housing, and livable wages. Love justice is justice fueled not by feel-good love. It's not dependent on affection or affinity or even liking the other. It means we command ourselves, as Dr. King said, to meet the demands of love, which are always to honor the humanity in everyone. We cannot allow anyone to be or become victims of insignificance. Love justice means no one is disregarded, for disregard making invisible is a weapon used to convince us that many folks don't matter. And to be honest, we are on the front lines here. Dr. King said that churches must be the conscience of a society, and we are the church. But this is kind of tricky. Because Martin Luther King is a singular force, one of a kind. Yet we are called both to recollect and honor his memory and to emulate him. But how could we? How can we? How can we model our lives on such an icon? I think we start small. Start by being aware and trying every day to attend to someone with just and loving attention. As I go about my day, utterly focused on getting my list accomplished, I can ignore, disregard, not even see the myriad of people who cross my path. And to compound that, I find it easy to treat people the way I treat it. If someone's mean to me, or dismissive, or rude, I feel a kind of license to behave in kind, to be snippy. And while I may be justified, to be so guided is not love. We are graced with the ability to choose love, choose to see differently, choose to be infused by love, and act as beacons of love, always. Shall we commit this day, this week, this month, to see and engage one person who we would not ordinarily? Can we pledge love justice? To see and behave in ways that cause other people, cause other people to feel included, seen, and respected? Be the corrective to the ways that make people feel sad and lonely and alienated and excluded, which makes them grow unkind. Can we commit to exude and exemplify love as we have been created to be and do? St. Augustine proclaimed, we are what we love. Shall our identity be defender of love justice? One who loves justice? So we command our hearts to love, to be obligated by love justice, so that we, so that the question on our hearts and minds always is, what will happen? to someone in need if I don't act. Today, we thank God for the prophet Martin Luther King, who showed us that the antidote to hate is not violence or bigger hate, but love. And not love is more feelings of affection, but love is justice, love that transforms. Thanks to God.